Look at this. I've got the whole ski hill to myself. This is incredible. This is like what it was 20 years ago skiing. And there's kind of a special reason for this. Here, let me show you. Warner Canyon is a one lift ski hill outside of a tiny rural town. And besides the locals, most folks have never heard of it. But it's about as classic a ski hill as they come. Oregon's second oldest, in fact. Perhaps most unique of all, it's a nonprofit run almost entirely by volunteers. A ski day at Warner Canyon starts hours before dawn. Downhill Dave has been grooming the slopes of Warner Canyon since 1984. He used to do it all volunteer. Now he gets paid a little, but he donates 80 hours before he takes pay. And even then, he doesn't log all the hours he works, especially not the hours spent fixing the snowcat. I got this job by necessity because these are kind of like a Harley Davidson. You got to work on them for an hour and ride them for an hour. All these cats that we buy are somebody's leftovers and they're starting to wear out. I've got the close to 20,000 hours of cat time in and I wore out. This will be my fifth cat. Dave isn't the only one doing chores this Saturday morning. Come on, get up there. Across the valley, Marty starts his day like many ranchers in rural Oregon. I love working out here. I lived in the city for 40 years. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to come back to this country. I mean, look at it. It's just, you know, it's awesome, man. I always tell people this is where God lives. He just visits everywhere else. <sighs> we feed cows in the morning, and then we don't have much to do with the rest of the day. I mean, well, there's always something to do, but we like to go have fun, too, you know. Marty grew up skiing at Warner Canyon. I learned how to ski when there was three rope toes there to get to the top. I was uh, so little that the rope would go up in the air and I'd be dangling up there. <laughs> we were young kids when we started. As teenagers, Marty was in the ski club with his buddies Pat and Mike Saban. Here we go. 1967. Hey, you're coming down the hill now, Pat. <laughs> Is that it's, a snowplow? Yeah, <laughs> it's a snowplow stem Christie. <laughs> Jeez, I thought I was a lot better skier than that. It had to be those old wood skis. <laughs> There's the house we grew up in right there, wow. Oh, look at that, right there you are, you got hair. Man, I'm looking good, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at those ski pants. Yeah, that was the most exciting Christmas I ever had when we got head skis for Christmas. <laughs> I haven't seen, these films were taken in 67, I haven't seen them maybe one time since then, it's unbelievable. The skiers at Warner Canyon back then had the strongest forearms in the state. Because when you had to hang on to three consecutive rope toes going up there, it was like, man, it was a chore. The rope toe started in 1938. It was powered by a Chevy truck motor. Then, in 1971, it was replaced by a T-bar. And finally, in 2000, Warner Canyon got a chairlift. Okay. Okay. Jim Copeland, who goes by the nickname The Powder Hound, is the hill manager. He helps maintain the one and only lift at Warner Canyon. I decided to quit teaching in 2006, and so I was sort of free and clear. And somebody goes, Jim, you need a job. You can be our lift hill manager. And I said, yeah, sounds like a good plan. Let's go. Okay. Little did I know how much work there is actually in, you know, in maintaining this lift. They got the lift used from Squaw Valley. Okay. Success. We had people from the community who came up, dug holes for towers. When the T-bar was put in after the rope toe was taken down, each family was responsible for digging the hole for that tower that went in. And I can remember Mike and I and my dad going up there and digging through and blasting rocks and digging the hole. And each family had a had a little project, so it was everybody took part in it. It was that kind of a thing. The first reel didn't didn't come out so good. It didn't rewind. Very well, but that'll be your afternoon project, Pat, put, <laughs> putting that back together. <laughs> Lakeview, Oregon, population 2,300. Traditionally a mill town surrounded by vast open rangelands. As locals know, a long drive to anywhere else. It may seem like an unlikely place to develop a ski culture. 
When the owner of the ski rental shop retired, a young couple, parents of three kids and owners of the local fitness gym, saw that Lakeview would lose its only rental shop, they stepped up. I went to a birthday party and they all started talking about what they were all going to do without the ski shop being here this year and they were all just devastated that they weren't going to be able to go, their kids weren't going to be able to go, they can't afford to go buy new gear each year. And, you know, so I asked, is it really that big of a deal? And they were, yeah, it was a big deal to the community. And they were just really, really upset that this wasn't going to happen anymore. So I came home and told them we need to see if we can keep this going for the community. If we are able to and we have the, the option to do that, we need to be able to do that. I'm glad it just came out on TV that it was your idea to buy it. Oh, Jesus. No, <laughs> it was not my idea to buy it. I just told you it was going to be very important. Uh, it's one of the world's largest babysitters, I believe. Thank you. Ready to go. We get to take her up there. She gets to go skiing without any adults there except for her and a bunch of friends because everybody knows everybody. If somebody gets hurt, any parent would know really fast. And there's so, a good ski patrol. Yeah, good ski patrol out there who know our kids all firsthand. Mm -hmm. So we feel really safe out there. Worst thing to worry about is them hurting themselves because they're doing something foolish. Which is what kids do. At least I do. <sighs> Everyone's up there, not just the kids. The whole families are up there, and so there's a lot of tailgating that goes on. <laughs> It's becoming clear that Warner Canyon is not just a ski hill to the town. It's the pride of the town. There you are. So I rent some skis from Buddy and Megan and head up to experience the hill for myself. Oh yeah, this is great. Sure enough, as soon as I take my first run, I meet kids skiing without parents. Nowadays, our parents don't really check in with us. They're like, mm -mm. well, here you are. Here's the hill. Have yeah. fun. They're excited to show me their favorite trail. It's pretty easy to get lost out here, but if you know the way, it's good. To ski Warner Canyon is to step back in time. There are no gondolas here, nor high-speed lifts, and no lift lines either. I mean, our lift lines may be you know, 10 or 15 people long at the most, uh, if we have one. You know, it's just round and round the hill you go. I meet up with the ski team. We own this place. We, we come up here and we look good. Yeah. We're the Lakeview High School ski team. Yep. After school, we'll come up here on a couple days uh, a week and we can get 15 to 20 runs in a slalom course. 12, 15 runs on a giant slalom course, and that's some pretty intense training. A lot of people in town grew up, if they didn't ski on the team, they either had relatives or kids that have, and so there's a connection. So they like to look to see what the ski team's doing, how they're representing the hill. Lakeview has a right to brag of its ski team. In 1968, local Jean Sober competed in the Olympics and brought back the bronze and silver medals. It's nearing 4 p.m., time for the last run of the day, and I have a promise to keep. I meet up with Loy, a retired lineman. He used to ski here with his wife, Jenny. My wife always wanted to ski, so when the kids got raised, she decided to learn to ski, and I would come up here with her and they finally talked me into doing it. So. She became a very good skier, and uh, I couldn't keep up with her, but she passed away, uh, she had cancer. It was a sad time, but she liked that run that went down through the trees, and so they named that after her. I ski up the first run and the last run every day. So it's kind of special. Minutes. Perfect. Thank you. It's the last chair ride of the day, but the volunteer work of Warner Canyon isn't done. <coughs> Barb Stevens prepares a special dinner in the ski patrol hut at the top of the hill. The stove makes it very interesting. You either burn or it doesn't cook. It's not easy, but it is fun. I tell myself that it's fun. 
The Moonlight Dinner is the grand prize of a fundraiser she organized. Through her efforts, Barb has raised several thousand dollars for the club, enough to restore the main lodge. Howdy! Hey there, Barb! Look at that valley. That's why we live here. <laughs> One more. This has been something that everybody has been involved in, and so we want to keep it going. We want to make it work for the next generation. So we're going to leave you up here. I'll leave you water, and I'll plate up your dessert, and then the walkie-talkie. When we'd have a tough time and tough years, the board members, I remember when I was president, we'd have bills come in and nothing in the checking account, and people would just take turns and say, I'll pay the power bill, I'll pay this bill, and we just made it happen. Because of the hard work of Barb and Jim and Dave and all the volunteers of Warner Canyon, this little ski hill remains. It's changed over the years, but not too much. And that's exactly how everyone here wants it to stay.